Craig Harcelo, and today we're going to be reviewing an old classic. I mean, it doesn't get much older than this, actually, than the uh, original NES itself. This is the NES Max controller, as you can see here. This was released in 1988 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the, basically this was supposed to be an improvement on the regular NES controller. Um, now, of course, when I was much younger, when I got this when I was like six, uh, my smaller hands fit this much better. As you can see here now as an adult, this is clearly doesn't do well because my hands um, basically almost engulf the whole thing. But what was, what was great about this is that you can see here, if you look very closely, you can see the, 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 the grip marks on the wings here that were supposed to allow you better control to hold the controller. A lot of people I know who had the original uh, NES controller with the rectangle, you know, you'd, you'd get so into it, your, your, your hands would have like indents in it because you'd be holding it so tightly, it would imprint inside to your hand. So this was designed to help prevent that kind of a rounder, more sleeker feel. And on top of that, it, really, it replaces the, uh, the traditional control pad the, uh, with a, what they call a cycloid, I guess is the, uh, the grandfather of the, the, uh, the modern controller joystick. And as you can see here, there's, because there's no, you can push down on it, but it really never did anything, but it was really to try to give you perfect eight direction movement. Uh, if you wanted the more traditional control style though, it does have these four arrows here around it to help move around. The problem is, is that when you, is that when you try and use those, your thumb still ends up hitting the cycloid, and so the NES gets mixed signals. Uh, so your best bet if you were going to use this was to just use the cycloid itself. Uh, of course, you still have your regular A, B inputs here, uh, but you also have two turbo buttons. Now, there was no real setting to the turbo button. It was just, you know, A and B, and then just unlimited turbo uh, for the turbo buttons. But it was nice in certain games like Contra and whatnot, where you could just kind of hold it down and just kind of, you know, let things go wild. Uh, and, of course, you have your start and select. So, I mean, overall, this was a great controller. I mean, especially for a lot of shooting games and whatnot that came out for the NES. Um... And I personally, I really enjoyed the cycloid. It was a lot less wear and tear on your thumbs. But uh, now, I mean, looking back at it, I mean, obviously, like I said, it's, it, I didn't realize how small it was. Until, this is the first time. This is the first time I've unraveled this cord probably in 20 years. So, uh, I, you know, looking back at it now, my being an adult, uh, at least in body, anyways, not so much in mind. Um, you can, you know, you can realize how much how, how an adult might have a problem with this controller because it's so much smaller than the original. The buttons are much closer together. But uh, overall, if you were a kid back then in uh, the late 1980s, early 1990s, and you had some NES games, this was a great alternative to the regular NES controller. So, for Classic Game Room and uh, CGR Undertow and uh, CGR News and uh, CGR Trailers and all our other channels, I'm Ray Carcillo.